now for the uh, actual piston uh, pump lip seal replacement. We have removed the pump head from the drive and uh, now we are going to remove the gland nut by unscrewing the cap. Pull the piston, gland nut and seals off as one assembly. So here you have the ceramic liner in the pump housing and carrier assembly and here what we have is the piston. I'm going to separate these seals a little for you so you can see the directions of the lips. The one closest to the bottom of the piston is the pressure lip seal. You notice the lip is facing towards the flat of the piston. The next lip seal is the atmospheric lip seal and that's facing up towards the gland washer or the gland nut drive support and pin. Then you have your gland washer, gland nut on your piston. So what we want to do is remove the seals from the piston and the one thing I want to just show you um, before I do that, now the reason we're changing these lip seals is that this uh, lip seal had an unfortunate accident and you'll notice here how the lip is folded over. There's the full lip and then as you go around it's folded over. Now the reason that's folded over is I'm going to show you something. When removing the pump head from the drive, taking it out, if for any reason the piston support goes further than the end of this carrier, what's going to happen is you expose the flat of the piston. And if that is just simply pushed down like so, what will happen is that you'll have a catastrophic lip seal failure because it's going to, the flat of the piston will fold over that lip. And worst case scenario, we'll bring the material down in between the piston OD, liner ID, and then you could have a jam, you could have a leak with the pump, that's because of the lip is not wiping the seal as it's supposed to. You can have a leak of atmospheric air or gas coming into the pump. So these are the things you must keep in mind. Whenever handling the pump head, you must never have the support, the top of the piston, ever exceeding beyond the end of the carrier. So now, now we keep that in mind, I'm going to simply remove the two lip seals from the shaft gland washer as such. Now, and gland nut. These two pieces now are, are ready to go into the ultrasonic cleaner. If you'd like to get a really thorough cleaning, you flushed it out with hot water or you cleaned in place with the material that was mentioned in the MSDS sheets. But if you want to really clean it well, if you have access to an ultrasonic cleaner, these can be submerged into the cleaner. Very important on the ceramic pistons never submerge the support into the cleaner. Always have it hanging so just the ceramic portion is in the cleaner, not the metal portion. What happens is that can take the anodized, which just is, off the support. So we want to make sure that's always above the ultrasonic fluid level. Have these clean in it for you know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever you feel is good. Once that's done, you can rinse it off with hot water and then you have your two components again. Always keep the piston matched with the liner. They are a match set. It's not something that you can take off here and put into another pump head. That's very important. They're only sold as match sets, so you must keep them together as match sets. So now that you keep this in mind, what we're going to do is reassemble the pump head. Piston, gland nut, gland washer. Now, very important is the lip seal insertion tool. Must use one of these because the it's, there's a lot to it. One is that it's very, very, um, it's made precisely so that the OD of this tool is very close to the OD of the piston. So you do not overstretch the, the ID of the lip seal. Also, the front has got a nice taper to it so that we, when putting the lip seal on, it, it doesn't deform the lip. Now, for the atmospheric lip seal, after we put the gland washer on and such, we're real simply, we're just going to, I'm a righty, so I'm going to hold this in my right hand. 
I'm going to take the lip facing away from the gland nut, so the lip is now facing up the same direction as this taper. That is known as our atmospheric lip seal. What we're going to do is put that on backwards first, just to get the, the conform the lip to the OD of the piston. So I'm going to take this and turn it as I push this down. As such. And you'll see how I moved it around. You see the lip facing up. Now we're going to remove the lip. Holding down the support or the tool, flip it over so now that the lip is now facing atmospheric, which is towards the gland nut and gland washer. As you can see, there is no break in the seal. And very important too with this tool, because the flat is very sharp. I'll remove here, you can see it's very sharp. That can put little cuts into the lip seal, which will prematurely wear your lip before you even get started. So that's why that tool is very important. Then you just simply push it down past the tool and underneath the gland nut. The next seal is your pressure seal. That is just simply going to go on in the direction it's supposed to go on, in towards the liner, the way the tip is facing, and just same thing. Just turn it, moving it down and over. Remove the, the lip seal insertion tool and there you see your two lips all the way around nice and even. There's no rips, no cuts. At that point you don't want to touch the, the surface of the piston. You really want to just take this and insert it into your housing of the, the body assembly which will contain your liner and the rest of your pump head drive, a pump head module. Simply install that straight. Do not force the piston to go into the housing. It's very important because there's a very tight tolerance in this and you don't want to break or chip the ceramic. Simply insert like so. Then you tighten up your gland nut. And at this point, your pump, drive, your pump head module is ready for it to operate.